Hey guys, we recently unboxed and reviewed a mid-tier board from ASUS, the Tough Gaming B550M Plus. This board has a lot of high-end features that we're used to seeing on premium boards. With the B550 launch, we get them without the astronomical price. They have features like support for PCIe Gen 4 for both graphics card and NVMe SSD, Wi-Fi 6, and 2.5 gigabit network. While most people cannot utilize them just yet, it is something that everybody can and will grow into with time. For this video, we've matched the board with an entry-level AMD Ryzen 3 3300X and a mid-tier graphics card, ROG Strix RTX 2060 OC. This card has an impressive cooler to push that performance. Talking about cooling, unfortunately our review sample did not come with a stock cooler, so we're using the Wraith Prism RGB from 3900X. This is certainly an overkill for this chip, but we wanted to overclock it. With that in mind, performance here is similar to a low-end aftermarket cooler, something like a Hyper 212 from Cooler Master. Things to note, as we're using an open bench, our thermals will be slightly lower than your average closed case. To have a baseline, we'll be comparing this whole setup with a two-year-old chip from Intel, the six-core 12-thread i7-8700K, which is overclocked to 4.9 gigahertz and has a 240 mil aerial cooler. The rest of the components are exactly the same between the two systems. For overclocking the 3300X, we're setting up the memory profile to DOCP and also setting the CPU core ratio to 44. Then scroll down to the voltages and set the VDDCR CPU voltage to manual and set it to 1.25 volts. This provides plenty of power for the chip to hit 4.4 GHz and is low enough to stay cool of under 95 degrees. Jumping into Cinebench R15, we find that in single core test, both CPUs are actually rather comparable. There's only about 5% variation between them. When it comes down to multi-core, we see 20% difference as to compared to 8700K at stock, and when overclocked, that is an extra 40% improvement. In Cinebench R20, we see similar results. Single core performance is basically the same between all variants. In multi-core test, we gain 28% improvement by going up to 8700K at stock, and an extra 10% from overclocking it. Moving on to the 7-zip benchmark. Here, the 3300X performs really well out of the box with an 18% improvement from overclocking it. This puts it just 3% below 8700K at stock and only 19% behind 8700K while it's overclocked. Next, we have Blackmagic RAW benchmark and here we can see that the test is bottlenecked by the CPU. Overclocking has 6% improvement on the CPU and 30% improvement on the GPU but more cores from 8700K provides an extra 60% performance on the CPU side and 40% performance on the GPU side. When we overclocked the 3300X and ran the test, the GPU only reached 60% utilization at its highest peak, leaving loads of potential performance simply wasted. Now let's check out gaming benchmarks. And here we see very fascinating results. For Shadow of a Tomb Raider, and Total War Three Kingdoms, as stock AMD Ryzen 3300X is lagging behind. But as soon as we've overclocked it to 4.4 GHz, we basically see the same results, indicating that the bottleneck is no longer with the CPU, but rather with the GPU. Moving on to Formula One and Doom Eternal. Here we see even less of a need for the overclock. If you look closely, you'll see that the 95 percentile for the AMD frame rates is actually higher right out of the gate. We've also tested CSGO, and yet again, we see 3300X taking the lead, and overclocking it improves the average by a whopping 90 frames per second. This is really impressive for a $120 chip. Lastly, we ran a real-world test for transcoding one of our 4K videos. We did this test with CPU only, then CPU plus NVENC encoder within the RTX 2060, we started with a 1080p and it's clear that having an extra and faster course makes a significant difference. When moving to 4K, the margin between the two clips is massive, but when you include the graphics card, the difference is not as drastic anymore. This is because 3300X is able to feed the GPU to do all the heavy lifting. Don't get me wrong, I'm in no way saying that they are comparable. If you intend to do heavy work like rendering, then you should avoid 3300X and go with a higher core count CPU. Which leads us to a good ending point. What does all of this mean? Well, 3300X is an excellent chip, which when paired with B550 motherboard, serves as a good jumping off point for any build. It can certainly hold its own in gaming, providing you pair it with a nice GPU, and even do some light video editing. I would almost go as far as call 3300X a perfect chip when you start off and building an AMD system, and then spend the rest of your money on a good graphics card, and then upgrade in the future, as the AM4 platform will allow you to do that really easy. 
We're working on a follow-up video to compare NVIDIA RTX 2060 against AMD RX 5600 XT with both these CPUs to see where you should spend your money for the ultimate performance. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. If you want to check out any of the items we've tested today, we'll leave a link in the description below. I hope this was useful. I'll see you guys in the next one.